as some of you just heard, the senator will join us for a few minutes of time sometime during the time that we're connected here. But we're very fortunate to have um, some key members of Senator Leahy's staff with us in the meantime to give us some perspectives and whatnot. And so, Emily, why don't we just turn it over to you, if that's OK? Yeah, absolutely. Um, sorry for that. I just was on the phone with the senator's um, assistant getting him signed in for this. So hopefully he'll be joining us in a few minutes. Um, I, my name is Emily Nosler. I think I've had a chance to meet a lot of you virtually in these different um, events or via email. Um, I cover banking issues for the Senator among a portfolio of other topics, including um, housing and rural development. Um, and I will pass it over to my colleague, Jeff, to introduce himself as well. Thank you, Emily. Um... Yes, my name is Jeff Van Ute. Uh, I worked for a senator for over five years now. I handle um, IRS tax issues for the senator, as like Emily, as well as another a number of other issues, including economic development, labor, and and so on. And um, it's a pleasure to meet with you all today. And I am originally from Vermont, born and raised in Brattleboro. Wow, good to hear that. Thank you very much, Emily and Jeff. We we appreciate it. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so in terms of um, where things are uh, with the various bills that are being considered in the Senate right now, um, I will give, I think, a brief overview of the bill that's going through the reconciliation process right now. And I'll also pass it over to Jeff to talk about the infrastructure bill um, that is being discussed. Um, actually, sorry, I just got a text um, from someone in our office that Senator Leahy uh, may have just joined us. Senator, are you on the call? I am. And I just, uh, there's votes going on right directly above the room I'm in. Uh, I'm in my office in the Capitol. And uh, I'm going to have to be going back to the floor in a few minutes. So Emily, I know you've got everything under control. Thank you very much, Senator Leahy, for breaking away uh, from the important business of the Senate to uh, join us for a couple of minutes. It's a real pleasure to see you because I know you're a little bit busy. Uh, <laughs> Joe, I'd uh, rather see you down here. Whereabouts are you? Uh, uh, all of us that are on the line, there's about 32 credit union leaders on the line here. And we're, I believe, uh, all of us or most of us are in Vermont. Uh, but many of these folks will be headed your way in February for our annual Governmental Affairs Conference. And so... Hopefully, uh, we'll have a little bit more time to, to meet in person and, uh, and things will go a little bit smoother. Maybe your schedule will be a little less hectic by that time. Well, the appropriations is keeping it very, very hectic. Uh, and trying to, we've, we've been in negotiating over hundreds and hundreds of points on it. And it seems like you get one part finished, something else pops up and so off we go, and uh, but you know what that's like. And, and are you in Burlington, Joe? Uh, well, uh, Williston, uh, Colchester, well, rather, but yes, well, Burlington area. I'm trying to figure out what the what's out your window. It looked like it was the lake. Uh, no, not the lake, but a lot of water that was coming down out of the sky earlier. <laughs> oh, okay. Good enough. Well, anyway, uh, and we got Jeff and Emily on here, and. Who else is here from my office? That's okay. You got the two best ones you could have. So yes, that senator. Yes, we do. <laughs> uh, and thanks to both of them for for joining us and helping uh, fill us in. So um, there were just a couple of things that we wanted to share with you, Senator. And one of them is we appreciate all. First and most foremost, we appreciate your decades of support and longer of credit unions. Uh, uh, you've been a big help to credit unions in Vermont and nationwide. So that's greatly appreciated by, by all of us, especially at you know challenging times during a pandemic and consumers being stressed financially and whatnot. Credit unions have been doing a lot of work during the past uh, a couple of years or almost a couple of years of pandemic and doing a lot of um, you know, special outreach and financial assistance to consumers, your constituents. And so I'm hoping that some folks might be able to, you know, share some of what they've been doing with you. Um, the one thing pertinent to what you're, you know, what Congress is working on now with um, in infrastructure and um, reconciliation 
And it sounds like, you know, headlines are that the IRS proposal has been withdrawn or set aside. Uh, but as I think you know, or your staff knows, that IRS proposal was of great concern to credit unions as financial institutions, not because they oppose uh, ensuring that people pay the amount of taxes that they should and businesses too, but because of the mechanics involved for financial institutions to, to do what the IRS was seeking. And, um, you know, credit unions don't have a position uh, as, a, as a group on either of those proposals before Congress, but the IRS uh, proposal, if it were to be a portion of either of those, does pose uh, some big uh, hurdles uh, and burdens for particularly smaller credit unions that don't have the um, infrastructure and the, the programming resources and whatnot necessary to be able to do what was postured as being very small sharing of information by financial institutions, but behind the scenes, there's a lot of complexity to it. So um, no, that that's uh, not an in infrastructure bill. That'd be in the reconciliation infrastructure bill right. passed the Senate. We're just waiting for the House to bring it up and uh, pass it. I had hoped that that would have been done uh, weeks ago because uh, I'd like to see contracts going out and people are contractors and others in Vermont being able to plan for a construction season, especially early next spring. And the longer it takes, the harder that's going to be. Right. So the reconciliation bill is in uh, the infrastructure and all that. My appropriations committee can handle all those things. The infrastructure bill, um, if you're, I don't know if you're going to be talking with Bernie today, but that's in his that would be in his committee and he could give you a better idea of where that stands. Thank you for that. Um, thank you very much. Be, you know, beyond that issue, uh, really, we just wanted the opportunity to share with you uh, for what time you're going to be with us so that you can hear firsthand from some Vermont credit unions about what they're seeing and what they're doing um, in the marketplace here in Vermont. And uh, I haven't, I'm sorry, is somebody saying something? Hi. Um, so, John, if it's okay with you, I, I thought we'd start with you as we've done before, because you made headlines, your credit union made headlines recently with a, a big support of housing in Vermont for less oh, advantaged that's folks, and that's big I news. I can get you. I'm going to mute that. All right. Hello, Senator. Uh, it's John Dwyer at New England Federal. I just wanted to uh, point I out. I, you, I recognize you, John. <laughs> uh, thank you, sir. I just wanted to uh, point out, you know, that the, all of us in the credit union industry over the last 18 months have been uh, very busy helping literally thousands of members refinance their homes uh, and on average save between $160 and $180 a month. But uh, what we did at NEFQ this uh, just recently, about six weeks ago, we made an announcement. Um, we have partnered with Vermont Housing Finance Agency and Champlain Housing Trust, uh, and we've actually uh, committed $6 million to their efforts over the next three years uh, to work on affordable housing. Um, and specifically with VHFA, uh, that's the, we've already committed a uh, million and a half dollars in prior years. So this is three additional million dollars, uh, 1 million each year. Um, and in, the, in that effort is a, around developing affordable housing. It's, it's not going to solve affordable housing, but it is meant to uh, com commit to trying to help the issue. And with CHT, we actually targeted that, that effort uh, with their partnership uh, on helping BIPOC home ownership. Uh, so members of our community who haven't had the support that many of us have enjoyed, um, we tar are actually specifically saying that we want to help that community um, and achieve home ownership as well. Um, but, and and John, I say that- John, you know how important that is because uh, I mean, I, I'm, I'm out all over the state all the time. And boy, I hear the need uh, for affordable housing. We could we can get jobs, but then we got to have housing, and you got the uh, uh, chicken egg thing. So thank you for that. Well, we're we're just an example, I think, of what 
you you've known about credit unions and we've known about credit unions in our our decades of experience together. Uh, yeah, this is just one way that a mutual organization gives back to the very community that supports it. So I, I stress that we're only one example, but uh, we're certainly proud. Our, our 280 Vermonters that work here are proud of what we're doing as well. I can say that. Thanks, Joe. Thank you, and I'm very proud of you. Uh, you know, I'm sure there are others of you. I don't want to go down a list or anything, so I'm just counting on you to, you know, weigh, weigh in a few, a few of you. Who, and, uh, and, I, and while we were talking, you probably saw the hand in the back. I've got, they're calling me back to the floor, but let's, let's, let's take time for one more example. I I, but I know, I know Jeff and Emily will hang on. They'll fill me in afterward, but. Thank you for that. The, these real, what John just said, these kind of real stories help so much because when I'm in committees, I can say, let me tell you a story and then refer to something in Vermont and people listen. If you give just statistics, it's sort of, if I say, here's something real, uh, people listen to me. It is along the lines of the picture is worth a thousand words and so is the story. So. Thank you for that. Uh, anybody want to jump in next? Just go right ahead, Kate. I'll, I'll just jump in really quick. Hi, Senator Blahey, mm -hmm. uh, Kate Laud at Opportunities Credit Union. As you know, we're a CDFI and a low-income credit union, and we we make both home loans and consumer loans and some small business loans. Um, in the course of business, like any other financial institution, we occasionally have to repossess a vehicle. Don't like to do it. And not great at it, but we do have to do it. Um, and we went to repossess a vehicle a couple of weeks ago and found that the owner uh, was living in his car. And so we, I think as a credit union, we have the flexibility to say, okay, we will not pressure you. You're working full time and you have to live in this car. So you can keep this car, stay in touch with us. Well, we hope we can work you out of this. It's, it's just a symptom of the housing issues in Vermont. Um, but I just want to say one other positive thing. We've seen a lot of collaboration with uh, savings banks and um, other financial institutions who are probably, uh, I would call it a stealth CRA work. So they're, they're very quietly supporting what we do. In one instance, someone gave us, uh, a, a financial institution gave us a grant to lower the interest cost on vehicle loans, which will help people like this individual who has to live in his car. So they may not get CRA credit for that work, um, but they stand behind uh, our mission. And I, I think that's a really nice story to tell. Okay, that, no, thank you for that because again, it speaks to what we are as a state and what all of you are as institutions that we're small and we know people and we actually care. I get, uh, I get so turned off by just somebody because of all these huge statistics and all. I said, well, who are the people? Who are the people you're affecting? Uh, as you know, my wife, Marcel, she's not retired, but she's a medical surgical nurse. She'd see these people and she'd see them later uh, out with their family and they'll come up and say, do you remember when I was in the recovery room and you were giving me my IV and all that, but I want you to know I'm back and here's what I'm doing. And this is my son who's just been admitted to uh, uh, college or whatever, and they're real people. I mean, your story is, you know, I, I, I don't know in some of these larger areas there'd be a story like that. I, I mean, we, that story is very touching. And, and Joe, I apologize for leaving. I'm gonna leave. Uh, Jeff and Emily here, and they'll fill me in afterward. But Senator, yeah, I, I, I just got the word. I got needed back on the floor, okay. so I'm going. You're getting, you're getting the hook, but thank you very much, Senator, for your time. We greatly well, thank you. And these kind of stories, Joe, you should always make sure that people pass them on. You you know that I'm going to listen. And I, and I, I, one of the other areas where I hear a lot of this when we're uh, when Marcel and I are walking through the grocery store back home or coming out of church. So people come up and say, oh, by the way, and that means a lot out here, these stories. 
And I'm hoping she should be walking with me before long as soon as her chemotherapy is over. She'll be able to be revaccinated. can be back with, with us. So thank you all very, very much. Thank you very much. Have a good rest of your day. And Emily and Jeff, if it's okay with you um, to hear a few more stories from some of the Credians that are on the line, uh, I think you'd be impressed with some of the things that you hear. Yeah, yeah that'd please. be fantastic. Please. Awesome. Um, so again, I don't want to go down a list and call people out or anything. So just please, just, just contribute. But I will call names out if I have to. <laughs> Um, Ms. Mr. Miller, Rob, VSECU, what are you seeing in the community among, well, your members? I mean, you cover the whole state as do an increasing number of credit unions. And so you're seeing all the corners and all the, you know, how people are reacting in different parts and what your credit union is doing. Yeah, thank, thank you, Joe. Um, Rob Miller, I'm uh, president and CEO of VSECU. Um, we, um, I think I'll offer some timely comments related to many of the proposals that are now um, being analyzed and considered um, in Congress related to climate change and energy efficiency and renewable energy, because I think it's more than just our experiences. It's more than just about the environment, which is critically important and, and a threat uh, to our mere existence. But, it's really about quality of life. And in many cases, what we're seeing is that when we're able uh, to come in and, and enable um, a household to make necessary improvements to their, their, their shelter, their home, um, they're actually able to save money net of the financing charges uh, of, those, of those improvements. And perhaps more importantly, actually be able to heat their homes to quality of life levels. And so it's not only an improvement to the environment uh, due to the energy efficiency savings, but it's an improvement to their quality of life, arguably to their health and their health care. So just want to offer our support for many of the initiatives um, that are being proposed and considered. And we've not read through all of them, but what we have read through, um, we're very excited to, uh, to take advantage of those on behalf of our members throughout the state. Yeah, thank you for bringing that up. Um, there are, you know, the bill is extremely long and we've been working hard to read through everything that the House has put forward. Um, but very, very excited to see that in the House version, there are um, tax credits and grant funding, both for making sure that new homes that are built, single family and multifamily units, um, are built efficiently in the first place, as well as similar programs for existing existing homes to make sure that they're um, the people who are already living there are able to, as you say, have a good a good quality of life and also um, have a good benefit uh, tangentially for the environment as well. So uh, very hopeful that those will remain in the bill through the Senate version. And Emily, I'm not familiar with the details, but my understanding are there there, there are some specific and incentives that are uniquely targeted towards low to moderate income households that allow them to participate to a greater extent in many of these things. And I would argue that that's critically important. We've worked in collaboration with Efficiency Vermont and other philanthropic uh, entities to buy down rates based on income, but those particular incentives I think are structured in some ways similar to the child care tax credit advance that actually give money into the hands of low, uh, low to moderate income households um, for these types of, of improvements. And so I just offer our support and encouragement for those areas because that's a, that's a particularly important and also a little bit more difficult uh, uh, target market to, to, to reach. Yeah, absolutely. Um, that makes sense. And I think, you know, we're very glad to see specific credits also for um, specific incentives, also for multifamily housing, because um, I know that in Vermont with a lot of the existing programs right now, it can be quite difficult um, when you don't own your home to, to access that kind of funding. Thank you, Rob. Um, Bob, I, I hate to spring on you unannounced, but I know that North Country is always very involved in the community and uh, doing lots of special projects. So I'm wondering if there's 
one of those or something you might be willing to share? Yeah, you know, the, as I was preparing for this meeting, and first, thank you, Emily and Jeff, for, for staying on and, and hearing our stories. I think they're important. And as John said earlier, all of them are correct, collectively representative of all the credit unions in the state. As I was thinking about the meeting, I was just sort of struck by not so much the, the our story and programs, but rather, you know, some of the stories of some of our members. And uh, thinking of a particular member um, living near one of the ski resorts in the state of Vermont, single parent, um, self-employed, and did uh, had a job at the same time, part time. Um, as a server and again, at, at one of the ski areas and just thinking of the collective impact that this individual went through at various stages over the past 18 months from, you know, obviously the stay at home orders and restrictions on hospitality and schools, which was a really big issue as well. And just what they needed to kind of make it through to the other side was sort of everything in the kitchen sink, right? Modifications, refinancing, PPP loans. We did a 0% interest emergency loan that was able to be paid off over four years as well. And really all of those programs collectively were needed for this member to kind of maintain financial stability in the darkest of times and now they're coming through on the other side. And I think to me, that's just sort of representative of what our credit union community has done with Vermonters on a person by person basis based on their unique circumstances. And I thought that was a important message to share with both of you today. Thank you for sharing it. You bet. It's a strong story, Bob. Um, Jane, similarly, your credit union uh, is very involved in the community, and you and you have a large geographical footprint. Let's... We um, we've just been approved for the state of Vermont, and one of the things that struck me is the number of large um, banks that are leaving the rural areas of Vermont. Um, uh, someone who uh, is familiar with real estate. Uh, has been calling us about knowing that we have been extended the state as a um, as a place to serve has been calling us with different places that are coming up because large banks have lost uh, have left the community so that's one thing that's on my mind. The other is um, affordable housing I just met with staff uh, last week um, and one of the things that came up for them was finding an affordable place to live within. Um, within reach of Burlington or within reach of, of South Burlington where our next um, office is going to be. Um, and then the number of people that have been pre-approved for mortgages um, and can't find homes because they're too expensive for them. So I just wanna keep that on, on the forefront of your mind is finding solutions for affordable housing in Vermont. And something that John is, has, has certainly um, generously contributed to and that we are all working towards. Yeah, absolutely. There are um, a number of programs that are sort of in consideration right now for um, both sides, I think, of the housing question, both the issue of making sure that people are able to um, pay their rent if they're renting a place, because um, obviously that can be quite a burden on families. But, you know, the senator is extremely concerned about um, just the lack of housing stock in Vermont and, you know, is very aware that Vermont is um, somewhat uniquely missing a lot of housing stock. You know, there is um, just an extreme lack of it. And he is, you know, working very hard to make sure that the programs, um, there are programs included in the bill that cover all parts of the income bracket. You know, right now the house bill has um, money specifically for, you know, the housing trust fund and the home program, which serves people who are very, very low income. And that's very important. Um, but 
also want to make sure that there is money in there for um, the low income housing tax credit and um, other housing production tax credits to make sure uh, that there's more housing specifically for the folks who have an income more sort of in the middle of the range. And then as well, um, more on the topic of the original infrastructure bill that has been passed by the Senate and is awaiting a vote in the House now. Uh, we all know that making sure one big component of making sure housing is affordable, even at the market rate, is just making sure that there is affordable financing for you know, the water and the sewer and the electric lines and everything else that has to underlie it uh, for that to be built. So uh, I would say that we are approaching this problem um, sort of from every angle we can think of right now, but really appreciate you bringing it up. And um, also, you know, the stories that you all have told about your, your active work on this topic. Thank you, Emily. Um, any, any other credit union stories that anybody wants to share, even if it's from the same credit union or somebody else? John? Okay. Emily, if I could just jump in on what you're talking about, I, I think it would be uh, also helpful for you to be aware as you deal with affordable housing. I, I just, I, as I think about the, the credit unions in this state, I think I'm pretty safe in saying that every one of us has some form of first time home buyer support. Um, and in fact, when we announced our contributions, we also announced that we are bringing back out a product where we actually give a a loan, a 0% zero payment, a forgivable loan for a down payment. And we actually pay the mortgage insurance for first time home buyers when they fit some certain criteria of affordability, et cetera. Um, and we've got dozens of members that were, are looking for homes to, to Kate and Jean's point. Uh, you know, the issue is often not uh, interest in or willingness to buy a home or even ability to buy a home, it's to find a home. So. I think it's um, always good for you to know that this industry is very engaged um, in trying to help individual members get into that first point of, of really wealth creation. As we all know, that's the place for most people uh, to do so. So I won't, I won't do anything more and just make sure if you ever look for stories, don't ever hesitate to call Joe. Uh, one of us has got a story uh, of what we're doing to try to get people in homes here in Vermont. Yeah, thank you for bringing that up. Definitely, not, we definitely do not have a shortage of stories. So, um, and they're all heartwarming ones and very helpful to consumers. Um, so, Emily and Jeff, um, you know, are, you heard the reference that I made early on to the concerns that we had about the IRS proposal, which if I'm to believe headlines and, you know, reports out of DC and when that sounds like it's been set aside, but, you know, as everybody knows, you know, it's not over till it's over. So, you know, we still are on watch on that arena, but I'm wondering if there's anything else that either of you want to share with us, whether it's related to infrastructure reconciliation or something else that you see is, uh, I won't say looming, but, you know, out there that might be of interest to credit unions as cooperative financial institutions. Jeff, do you wanna go ahead and, and talk a bit about um, the sort of tax issues that are being considered? And whatever you wanna mention about infrastructure as well, would be great. Yeah, um, well, first off, thank you all for meeting today and telling those stories. I thought they were all, as Emily said, they are just, and the senators, everyone else are just great examples of from people in Vermont just making a difference to help out their communities regardless and of where they are positioned. Um, for the uh, for the infrastructure and reconciliation process, I mean, I've been saying this to a lot of people for a while now, but the hope is that there will be action soon. <laughs> and I think we've made a lot of progress, especially in the past week, uh, the two weeks with the agreement of framework and bill text on reconciliation being laid out. Um, and what that means for infrastructure is the hope, uh, since it's already passed, I'm sorry to go in between both bills, but for infrastructure, the hope is that it, it will pass the house with, and I don't, there isn't expected to be any changes to the Senate passed package. 
So that will be signed right away by the president once it passes at some point this month. And then for Build Back Better Reconciliation, that is still, as you can see, clearly a work in progress. The latest developments today were surrounding paid leave and Speaker Pelosi saying that they were adding a four week paid leave provision back into the bill and then that the House will then vote on the bill. Um, we will see where that goes. There's been a lot of talk too for, with, in the tax world about adding a, a, a retroactive full repeal of um, salt tax. And so because there are a lot of mod more moderate members in the House Democratic Caucus that are, are saying they're refusing to vote without the addition of salt um, for issues that would impact you all as it came up already, the IRS reporting requirement was was talked about, debated, but it ultimately not added to the bill. Um, I would be surprised to see that. I know, as you said, it's not over till it's over, but of provisions that could be added, taken out and added back in. I'd be surprised to see that one added back in. I think one of the reasons why it was taken out was because there was such a big outcry of expressing concerns regarding from all groups, from you all from the credit unions, the ABA, and to just a number of other groups. And I think that worried folks and that there just needed to be more discussion and vetting of that proposal before you can really make it in the law because as you said, there are a lot of un unintended consequences there. Um, and regarding the tax provisions of Build Back Better, I mean, there are a significant number of uh, tax provisions to, as pay for us for the bill. I don't want to get into the nitty gritty here, but happy to answer any questions regarding specific proposals that members on this call may have. And then I don't know if Emily has anything else to add. Yeah, happy to add a little bit, but I'll uh, give some time if anybody has questions for Jeff on what he just said. Doesn't look it. All right. Yeah. Um, thanks, Jeff. That was a really good, really good update. Um, in terms of the reconciliation bill, you know, as Jeff said, we just are um, extremely in a waiting game on this. Um, but in terms of what is in there, you know, that is um, of particular um, particular excitement, I think, for Vermont and that you all might be interested in, um, sort of in addition to a lot of this funding for housing that we've been, that we've been discussing, um, there is also a few provisions that are um, very exciting for, um, rural areas particularly. Um, I think that, you know, in addition to this funding from HUD, there also is some specific funding for housing programs through the USDA. Um, so, you know, would hope to see some additional funding for um, repair and restoration of rental properties that are, you know, currently funded through the USDA Rural Development Service. Um, and additionally some money to make sure basically that those, as we discussed before, making sure that those houses are up to livable standards um, and comfortable for the people who are living in them. Um, we, I think, anticipate that, well, I was gonna say that, not sure exactly what, what will be in and what will be out. Um, as Jeff said, we really are in very active negotiations right now, but it's you know good to hear all your priorities and priorities from people around Vermont as we sort of consider consider what's in and what's out and uh, evaluate the bills that we're seeing come from the house at this point. Um, so I also am happy to answer any questions or hear any more from all of you. I might be showing my ignorance here, but uh, for either one of you, do you see, um, now I'm not asking an official office position, but do you see a, a realistically a, a timeline going forward on reconciliation? Yes, um, I'm happy to take this one, Emily. So the hope and timeline is votes, those two votes happen either 
this week, but that's getting this week gets shorter, shorter by the day. And if not, the House will vote next week while the Senate is out. And then the Senate is expected to take up um, reckon and then have the parliamentarian go th scrub through the bill for the birdbath process to see what fits and what doesn't via reconciliation the following week. And then the week prior to Thanksgiving, the Senate hold a voterama is what we're looking at right now. I think we want, obviously want action on it and we want to move somewhat quickly because um, of the impending December 3rd deadline of for government funding and the debt ceiling, which is a whole nother issue. But we want to get through this process first. And so we really hope to get it all done before Thanksgiving. That sounds like a lot of work, which you're all accustomed to by Thanksgiving. <laughs> it does. And it looks like uh, Robert may have a question. Yeah, thanks. I, I want to offer um, an additional perspective, and and, and I say this, I, I, I don't mean to uh, harp on, on the same issue of the IRS proposal, um, and perhaps we're a bit paranoid, Jeff, and so I appreciate your comments that you don't think it's coming back. In some respects, because of the law of sort of unintended consequences, and we certainly have institutional concerns with how that would be implemented, but I also want you to know that we have received a tremendous number of inquiries from our members. Um, and they don't really know or care about those institutional concerns that we have. Um, they're concerned about their privacy and their data. Um, and, um, you know, the privacy of that information we provide to the government for really, and I will tell you that they don't really understand uh, the connection between, um, you know, the, the information that's being requested and the action or the purpose for which um, it's being requested. There's a wide gap between what the government has said they want the information for and actually how they're going to use it in order to accomplish that objective. And in this day and age, given all the news that they've seen about uh, data breaches and, and data security, they're very concerned that that information won't be able to be held private. They already have those concerns, frankly, um, um, but those concerns are elevated if we're going to be providing more information. So I just want you to know that it's not a, a, a credit union institutional only issue. Um, you know, we'll figure that stuff out if we have to. We would prefer not to, and it'll be expensive to do, and that will have an impact on our members and our ability to give back to our members. But it's really a member issue, um, as evidenced by the number of calls that we've received um, uh, into our call center and into our branches and other and other areas. Well, thank you for that. And yes, we've been hearing on the, from individual Vermonters on the privacy and data concerns as well. I mean, like you, I would feel as though this is one of been the top issues that Vermonters um, have been calling in about in the past month plus, especially within my portfolio. So it's, it's on top of our radar and we are very well aware of how, of the concerns that are being expressed. Okay. Thank you, Jeff. We appreciate it. And thanks for bringing us back around to that, Rob. Uh, good, very good point. Um, I, I don't want to cut the, anybody's commentary discussion short, but I don't want to uh, drag it on needlessly either. And anything else that anyone wants to contribute from any credit union or you, Emily or Jeff? Oh, looks like I met the going once, going twice part of the conversation. Um, Hey, thank you very much, Emily and Jeff, and please express our thanks again to the Senator for taking time out of uh, what's a very busy schedule, particularly right now, uh, to spend some time with us. Uh, you know, everything that you're doing in Washington is critical to all of us, uh, not just as credians, but as consumers. And so uh, we really appreciate uh, what you're doing, what you're all working on, and the Senator's support of credians again. Uh, over the decades has been outstanding. So thank you very much. And thank you to all the rest of you who joined us today and to be on the line and to share stories about Vermont credit unions. And as I think uh, John mentioned early on, Emily, uh, don't hesitate to call on us for um, a bibliography of um, consumer member stories because uh, we can provide those uh, for days on end. Thank you, everybody. Absolutely. Thank you all for uh, coming in and meeting with us. Thank you, and hope to see you again and hopefully in person come February.